Hello, this is Gail Sacha, Educational Services Representative and Team Leader with Osborne Books and More. And this video is Book Fair Previews and Wish List. I wanted to start off with why doing wish lists and previews at book fairs is a vital component to a successful book fair. And I will go through some of the hows. To begin with, many of our books are unknown to students. And when you do previews and wish lists with the classes, you are being proactive and helping to address some of the common questions and possibly complaints that students will have when they walk into the book fair and they don't see their favorite characters and TV shows and movies and authors available. When we talk to them about the books that we do have, they get excited about the book fair and they become our greatest marketing tool. No matter how many flyers you send home and posters you put up, kids going home with their wish list excited about a book or two or five is going to be your best marketing tool. And then as you are doing your previews, your librarian gets to know the books as well, which is hopeful helpful for two reasons. One, you may get busy checking people out and so she will be available and familiar with the books to be able to help families and students. And then she will also find the books that she's in love with and is excited to have for her free books after the book fair is over. Additionally, you can use your wish list and preview time to move the product that you have. So if you have a whole bunch of a certain book, then you can talk about it a lot. If you only have a little bit of many different titles, then you can rotate what you talk about so that you are getting kids excited about everything that you have. Maybe you have some books that have been sitting around for a little while and you can share about those. You think they're fabulous, but for whatever reason, they're not moving. Uh, but definitely the books that you talk about tend to be the ones that sell the most at your book fair. So let's talk about the how. First, we're gonna talk about what happens before the book fair even begins. The first is that you're going to need to set up a preview schedule. And this is the times when classes are gonna come in to be able to look at the book fair and make their wish list and have you talk about the book. So you'll want to decide who's going to make a, that sign up sheet. In general, librarians or media specialists are used to doing this for their other book fairs and so they have something that works for them. You'll also want to know who's going to reach out to the teachers. Again, most librarians are used to doing this and they are the best resource for reaching out to teachers. However, if they don't want to for any reason, you can certainly take this on. You'll just wanna make sure that you have all of the email addresses and that um, you are able to reach out to them in several different ways. Uh, you want to email them and then also have the previews to sign up in a prominent place like the uh, teacher lounge. And then you want to decide how long each preview will be. And this has a lot of different factors that go into it. In general, I tend to like to have 15 to 20 minutes per class. I talk for about five to eight minutes and then the students have a chance to walk around and do their wish list. Um, much shorter, you're going to be rushed. Much longer, the kids are going to get bored and start causing trouble. So that tends to be a good amount of time that I have found in my experience. And, but this will also depend on how many classes you're trying to get through, how many days you'll be there doing previews. Um, so you may want to make them shorter if you need to put in a lot of different classes or you're trying to keep it to one or two days. And then how they will sign up. In general, it's usually a paper sheet, like I said, that is put up in the teacher lounge. Um, however, I have had schools that do a Google Doc, and that's really nice because I can see it um, and have access to it even when I'm not at the book fair. And then you'll want to find do the wish list form, which I have a sample right here, um, and decide who will make it. In general, I do because I can put in uh, the specific information about when the book fair is. That's really great to have on your wish list because kids are taking that home. They will have already had a flyer, but this is 
like I said, when they're excited about the books and bring them home and it has the information right there when um, it's fresh in their mind. I keep it super simple. You can certainly brand it. You can have it go along with whatever theme the book fair is going to have. Um, but I know they're going to have to make one of these for each kid in the class. So I don't want to waste a lot of ink. I don't want it to have a lot of distractions. I keep it pretty simple. But you definitely want to have a place for their name, the book title, and price. Uh, sometimes schools will do the table and either number those or have a category for them. Um, I found it just takes a little bit of extra time to do this, so I've skipped that part, but some schools like to have that access. And then you definitely want to have the online order information as well in case the family can't make it back to the book fair. So what do we do during the preview? So before the class comes in, you're going to select some books, and I recommend having a few from each category. So for the younger kids, definitely some picture books, some early chapter books, activity, and nonfiction. Um, and then I keep those piles of books for each grade uh, up front where I'm going to sit by me and switch them out. Like I said, if I, there's a book that I want to, um, I don't have very many of that I want to switch out or um, just to change things up and keep kind of the inventory piece of it working. You're going to do your book talks. Um, and like I said, you have a little bit of variety. You're going to talk about each book in little snippets. You're not going to give them the whole thing. Uh, sometimes I'll read or skim through one of the picture books to get them excited about it. But in general, I'm just telling them a few things about why I love the book, why I think they will. It's good to mention this book is similar to, or if you like this book or this genre, then you'll really like this book. Um, so they can identify and make connections. You can put together some videos, and I have done this before with older kids. Uh, you just have to kind of keep them up to date with what books we have currently available. And then as you're wrapping up, you want to tell them the book fair details, when the book fair is going to be, uh, how they can order online, what happens when the book that they want isn't available, and let them know that you will for sure order it for them. Um, as you are doing your book fair, there's some reminders you might want to consider uh, telling kids that they should write on a surface or on a clipboard instead of writing on the books so you don't have little pencil marks on all of your books, reminding them that stickers aren't for taking off, um, that they can, you know, look with their eyes. I let them pick up the books and look. We just want to make sure that they're not opening every flap and getting into the book. We want to keep them as new as possible. And then for the little kids, uh, kindergarten and first grade, they may need help, especially with kindergartners writing. So I will have them go to the book that they're interested in and raise their hand. Um, and usually you need everybody on board uh, for that. So the librarian will be helping the teacher, the teacher's aide and you so that you can get to all the kids. And we at least try to get one, maybe two books for those grades. Um, the older kids, will be able to do the writing, but they might need help finding um, the title that they wanted. They might need help finding the price on it. Um, they might struggle because the title is super duper long, um, so you can help them figure out how to put just Desert Dust Up or Wheel Nuts instead of the entire title. And then you also kind of want to help with the flow, so keep an eye on the clock and give the class uh, warnings when they have five minutes left, help them um, get lined up, collect the clipboards, help give the clipboards out at the beginning. Um, and I'm mentioning clipboards a lot. A lot of schools will have a process ready to go where there are clipboards available in the library and pencils, um, but if they don't have that, then you just kind of want to keep that in mind um, so the kids aren't writing on the books and that you can help the process go as well as possible. So that's a little wrap up for previews and wish lists. I highly, highly recommend, especially if you're working with a school for the first time, that you do wish lists and previews. They are really fun. It's my favorite part to get to know the kids and share the books with them. Um, but your sales are going to be way better uh, if you 
follow through and do this piece of it. It is a little bit time consuming, but absolutely worth it. I will put some resources on the links below. And thank you so much.